Hi, I'm Jorge Perez Perez and welcome to a new video on visualization, identification and estimation in the linear panel event study design. On this video, we'll talk about identification with proxies or instrumental variables. So let us first recap a bit about the setup we have. We have an outcome variable of interest, YIT, which will regress on unit fix effects, time effects, control variables, and on dynamic effects of the policy variable of interest, Z. These dynamic effects can go from up to G periods in the past to up to M periods in the future. And we also have an unobserved confounding variable, CIT. This unobserved confounder can be related to the policy variable of interest. And unless we can say something more about the confounding variable CIT, we're not going to be able to identify the parameters of interest beta m. Identifying assumptions on the behavior of CIT should be justified on economic grounds. On the previous video, Simon discussed identification strategies without proxies or instruments. And on this video, I'll talk about identification strategies with proxies or instruments. Okay, so in this video, I'll cover three approaches. First, I'll talk about an approach with a traditional instrumental variable. Then I'll talk about a setup with two proxy variables. And last, I'll cover an approach with one proxy variable with noise uncorrelated with the policy. And I'll cover that in a little bit more detail. Okay, so the first approach is access to a traditional instrumental variable. So if you have an instrument for the policy that is unrelated to the confound, you can use it to, to instrument for the policy and estimate the parameters via two stage least squares. As an example, we can think of the policy variable as the minimum wage, and we can think of an outcome of interest as the unemployment rate of teenagers. In that case, uh, if, if for example, you think that the minimum wage is set up via a political process and you think that political party representation is associated with changes in the minimum wage. And also, if you're prepared to believe that this political party representation is not related to the unemployment rate of teenagers other than through the minimum wage, then you can use this political party representation to instrument for changes in the minimum wage and estimate the parameters of interest. Another approach you can use is a setup with two proxy variables. So if you have access to two proxies for the confound and the measurement error is uncorrelated across these proxies, you can use one proxy to instrument for the other in the regression. This approach is related to measurement error models. And coming back to the minimum wage example, Say that you think that the underlying state of the economy is confounding the effect of the minimum wage on teenage unemployment. And you have access to, say, the employment rate of two demographic groups that are not teenagers. And you think that those can help you measure the underlying state of the economy. If that's the case, then you can include one of those employment rates and instrument it with the other employment rate to account for the effects of the confound. All right, the last approach that I'll cover in some detail is the case of one proxy with noise uncorrelated with the policy. So we have access to an observed proxy XIT that obeys this equation right here. Since it has to be related to the confound, this coefficient has to be different from zero. And this is a noisy proxy, but the noise in the proxy is not correlated with the policy. And we also need that when we project the confound on the leads and lags of the policy variable um, for the leads and lags that we include in our event study plot, then that projection has at least one non-zero coefficient. Okay, so let me tell you how this works through a series of graphs that will portray the intuition behind this approach. What I have here is an event study plot for an outcome, and this event study plot displays a pretrend right here. This pretrend may be due to the presence of the confound. We also have access to a proxy variable, 
and we can plot the dynamics of this proxy variable through an analogous event study plot. So this proxy right here is also displaying a pretrend. Now, under our assumptions, if the policy doesn't have an effect on the outcome before the event takes place, then the pretrend in the outcome right here must be due to the presence of the confound. And because of that, this pretrend right here is telling us how the confound affects the outcome. At the same time, the proxy variable measures the dynamics of the confound. So we can use this information to adjust the original event study plot for the outcome for the dynamics of the confound. We're going to do that by aligning the two event study plots. That's what I'm showing here. The dots are showing the original event study plot and the triangles are showing the event study plot for the proxy variable aligned to the event study plot for the outcome. One way to align these two plots is to make sure that the coefficients at event time minus one and event time minus two overlap. So the pretrend in the outcome is telling us the effects of the confound on the outcome and the pretrend in the proxy and the dynamics of the proxy after the event takes place are telling us the dynamics of the confound. So we can use these confound dynamics as measured by the proxy to adjust the original event study plot and subtract the effects of the confound. And when we do that, we arrive at an event study plot like this, where we have adjusted the original event study plot for the dynamics of the confound as measured by the proxy. And so we end up with an event study plot where the pretrend has been adjusted for the dynamics of the confound and also the coefficients after the event takes place have been adjusted. Now, let me turn to Stata to show you how we can do this using the Stata command XT event. So let me first remind you that to install the Stata command XT event, you only need to type SSC install XT event. All right, so what I have here is a data set with all the elements necessary for a linear panel event study design. We have an outcome variable Y, a policy variable of interest Z. We have units I, time T, and we also have access to a proxy variable X. To estimate an event study with adjustment for a proxy variable, we can just write XT event the outcome variable of interest y, the policy variable of interest z in this case, and the proxy variable of interest, which in this case is x. And we also need to write a window around the event in which we want to estimate the event study. So when we do that, xt event instruments the proxy with leads of the policy variable. It automatically selects one of the leads of the policy variable to do that. And it returns some estimates of the effects of the policy variable before and after the event takes place. Now, to see a series of plots that convey the intuition behind this approach, we can use the post estimation command xt event plot. So to see the original event study plot for the outcome, we can write xt event plot comma y. And we can see here an event study plot for the outcome. Notice that this outcome also has a pretrend here and some dynamics after the event takes place. To see the event study plot for the proxy, we can write xt event plot comma proxy. And this is going to show us an event study plot for the proxy. So this proxy also displays a pretrend right here, and it has some different post event dynamics. To see the graph where we overlay both the event study plot for the outcome and the proxy, we can write xt event plot comma overlay IV. Since this was a two stage least square strategy, that's why the syntax is IV. And here we see the two event study plots aligned. 
the dots are the original event study plot for the outcome and the triangles are the analogous plot for the proxy and they have been aligned such that the coefficients on the normalized coefficient uh, minus one and the coefficient at event time minus two which is the one that corresponds to the, the lead that was used for the IB estimation uh, we've made sure that those overlap to align the graphs so again the pretrend in the outcome is telling us the effect of the confound on the outcome and the pretrend on the proxy variable and its dynamics after the event takes place are telling us the behavior of the confound as measured by the proxy so we can use this information in the proxy to adjust the original event study plot for the dynamics of the confound uh, subtract them and arrive at an adjusted event study plot and to see that adjusted event study plot we can just write xt event plot and here we have our adjusted event study plot where we have subtracted the effect of the confound on the outcome so this concludes our review of identification approaches with proxy or instrumental variables. Thank you for watching and I hope this video has been useful for your research.